Do you struggle with overcoming great odds? Are you one of those people that feels trapped in a box and limited by what other people say about you? Well, stick around. Today, we're going to talk about defying the odds on a special Leaders and Communicators. Hi, it's a Trigger Rich Bond Trigger, back for another Leaders and Communicators. And I always share from my experience 25 years as a professional broadcaster, as a pastor, as a motivational speaker and leader. That's what I'm sharing on my channel here each and every week. Well, today I'm going to share a little bit more personally, and I'm going to talk about defying the odds of life. There's a lot of times in our life when we hit challenges, when we hit walls and barriers. Some come from within us. Some are imposed by others. But many of us battle trying to get upstream and trying to move in advance, and we feel we just can't do it. I believe you can. So today, as we start off, I want you to go down to the comment bar right below, right in that little description area. What is that thing that you struggle with that defines you, that limits you? What is that thing that you would like to defy, the thing you want to overcome so you can step in and be the person you believe you really are? Write that down because this is going to be the first of probably several videos dealing with this idea of defying the odds. So the first thing I think it's really important to understand about defying the odds is you have to decide to not listen to everyone's voices. That's right. You have to have a strong will. You have to have a desire and determination that you can do it more than they say you can't. And that's really hard because people are telling us no all the time. No, you can't achieve. No, you can't be that. No, that will never work. We hear more no's in our life. When in fact, maybe we need to start saying, yes, I can. There's been a, a lot of many overcomers in this world. In my particular story, even though I've made my career as a broadcaster and public speaker for more than 25 years, I also have a lifelong stutter that stays with me forever. When I was a young child, I was told very early on, your stuttering is going to prohibit you in so many areas of life. I would read in the classroom and read a book and all the eyes would be on me and they would all look at me and they would snicker and make names and joke and tease. I'd get very flushed and very red. My hands would be sweaty as could be and the stutter would get worse and worse with every word I read. I ran out of classrooms in tears because my stutter was that intense. My mother stuttered. I stuttered. It was all part of our life and I really believe this mouth would be of no value for most of my life. I defied the odds because I just chose to believe there was something different and better and I had to learn tricks. I, I had to slow down. Part of my stutter comes from my mind is racing. My mouth and my brain are not in sync. And so I have to slow down and allow my mouth and my brain to get more in concert with each other so I can speak. And once I learned to do that, I began to defy the odds. I began to go forward. Now, another step of overcoming this is I think you have to believe in something beyond yourself. You have to have a vision of a picture of something you can be beyond what people limit and tell you are. Now, that was broadcasting for me growing up. I fell in love with Cubs baseball and Harry Carey growing up. I would listen to the radio. I loved the idea of public speakers. I would actually, true confession time, before I became a pastor, I would do little mini sermons in my basement downstairs talking to toys. Now, I wanted to be that public speaker, but my tongue would not let me. I had to start seeing that. So as I began to step into that, one of my professors told me that in my broadcasting career, you'll never have a broadcasting career. Dr. Richard Long, my college professor, told me, you have a great voice, Rich, but you will never become that broadcaster because no one's going to hire a guy that stutters and can't read the news. What happened was, I found out I can't read hard news. I'm not good at that Walter Cronkite tough hard news. I get emotional. I don't like reading about tragedy. But when I got into sports work and I began to see the play-by-play -play and color analysis and ad-libbing and my energy and my passion could come out in a broadcast, it unlocked my tongue even more. And now I've done sports broadcasting all my life from college to semi-pro Everywhere I've traveled, every state I've ever lived in, I've always had broadcasting going on. It's an amazing thing for a guy that has a lifelong stutter still with him. Just don't let me read the hard news. 
The third thing in my particular case, I want to encourage you with, I have, I have a faith. I have a strong faith in God, and God's been a big part of my entire life. But I had to believe that God did not make me and design me to have a limit in life that would be so strong as a stutter. I had to believe that he had a purpose for this. As part of my story, as part of helping people, I had to use my tongue because it was wired within me to share, to speak. It was something I was passionate about, but my tongue was limiting me. I was involved in a drama group. Yeah, drama. The guy that stutters was going to be on a drama team for one summer. The very last performance before we went on tour for the summer, it was a go, no-go moment for this team. We were trying to decide if I could pull it off. And we were told very clearly, if my tongue did not work, we were not going to do that performance. I went out, hit every mark, hit every line, every emotional cue, and we came backstage and the director of our team came forward and said, what just happened? Because that was not you. That was flawless. So not only are we doing the play, this is going to be the centerpiece for the entire summer. Lo and behold, I also became the key spokesman for the entire team for the entire summer. Anytime they needed something to guest speak, to lead a discussion group, to address the public, I did all promotions, I did all public addresses, and I was the guy with the horrible stutter, but God changed my tongue. And that really began to loosen me up and loosen me up even further. That was the beginning of the change. And I've been defying the odds for years and years. Even as I videotape this now with you, my stutter is still very alive, but I have tricks and tips and practices to help me overcome. And this is one small area that I have defied the odds in my life. I have several others that I will be sharing about in the next few videos. And we're going to explore this because leaders, if you're a leader, you got to defy the odds. It doesn't come naturally. It doesn't come easily. You have to determine you're going to fight for it and dig in and you're going to overcome. You have to believe in that vision, that dream that God has given you or you've been appointed to lead a certain part of the organization. You need to believe in that greater picture and step into that greater picture. And if you do have a faith system, rely on the faith. Because I believe faith, not just in yourself, but faith in God helps you to move forward beyond where you are at. So, what is that thing that you struggle with? What, what is that thing that you want to overcome? The thing that is limiting you from being who you fully potentially can be? Give me a comment. Give me a like. Give me a share. Hit that bell and let me know that you want to get every video that comes on out, especially in this new series of Define the Odds. That's it for this week. Thanks for tuning in. God bless. Have a great week. I'm the Trigger, Rich Bond Trigger. We'll see you next time.